Now, if the blast furnaces were all about the fire, this place is all about the water. The huge steel strips come hurtling down here red hot. The jets of water cool them down, and they're made into these enormous steel coils. Stepping through the doors of the blast furnace, there was a scene that wouldn't have been out of place in Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Welcome to hell. OK, so maybe I got a little carried away, and there didn't seem to be any souls in torment, unless you count the guys who have to shift iron ore into these 1,500-degree ovens for eight hours every day. So I've got the remote control here, and this is what actually operates this massive cutting tool that takes the coal out of the seam and onto the conveyor belt. So here goes nothing. It's like a black waterfall. The cutter slices 80 centimetres of coal at a time, and once one side has been thoroughly excavated, the whole operation moves forward. It only takes two hours to dig out a trainload of coal, and once it's been cut from the wall, the conveyor takes it straight to the factory. And occasionally, it's a quick way out for a tired miner. I'd only been down the pit for a short time, but there's no avoiding the water and the cloying dust. And it was a relief to get back out into the sunshine. Well, you talk about a dirty, tough job. People speak about a day at the coal face. Honestly, I don't think they know they're born. These look like a motley band of fighters. I knew that weapons training was going to come in handy. It was my great honor to die for my brothers. Oh. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, I think the chain mail caught the worst of it. Taxi drivers who drove like this. Now I know where they get their training. Somehow I had taken the lead, but then from out of nowhere. God, come back! And there were one or two more technology issues. Oh! Any windscreen wipers? Okay, so I didn't win, but I'll never look at a larder quite the same way again. This is Russia's wine country. Around 60% of the crop comes from around this area. And I'm about to meet the people who make some of the best. Kostya, these are oh. your grapes, I believe. Yes. And this now, is a very important time of year, huh? Yes, now we are, it's a harvesting now. Mm -hmm. So we just, just finish our harvesting period. There was a pretty big barrel of grapes to crush. So it seemed only right to take the plunge. The music is supposed to get everyone stomping away in a nice uniform rhythm, but learning a Greek can-can while slipping around on 50 kilos of grapes takes some doing. And I was about to get my reward for lending a foot. <laughs> so I think after all that hard work, we definitely deserve a drink. Thank you very much, sir. Yamos. It turns out that John was an aspiring doctor who'd come all the way from Sudan to study in Saransk. And the next day we met up for a walk around the city. So you have 12 brothers and sisters? Yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm an only child, so that just kind of blows my mind. <laughs> I guess I'm lucky. Uh -huh. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. John's been based in Saransk for almost four years, but he admits yeah. that it's taken time to adapt to Russian culture. But with another two years before he's qualified, John's focus is firmly on his studies. 
Yeah, you see, since I wanted to be a doctor, the time I came here, I got the opportunity. Because in Russia, they give us everything. We got books, we got labs. After finishing, I'd like to go home, help my guys out. See, you can do something that really, really will make a difference. Yeah, I have to make a difference in this world. It's incredible how loud the sound of all these geezers is. And the steam gets so thick sometimes that I can barely see in front of my face. But what you can't get an idea of is the smell. It's like I'm standing next to an enormous kettle, but I put about five rotten eggs in there to boil as well. It's interesting, to say the least. As the only hot running water in the park, the streams are a good place to go if you've got some stubborn washing up. But I found a much better way to make the most of them. Now, after eight hours being bashed around in a bus and a day in the rain, this is about as good as it gets. Lelichova's very own natural jacuzzi. Many of the helpers here are planning to take monastic vows, but others, like Sergei, are looking for a different kind of redemption. I joined this monastery because I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. Lay people get subsidies for medical assistance. People suffering from all kinds of addictions stay here for long periods of time. So this is what daily life is like for Sergei and the other helpers here. The faces tend to change on a fairly regular basis, but one thing stays the same. None of them are here for material gain. They're all hoping for a more spiritual reward and maybe to exercise a few personal demons as well. Say hello to Zorik, Zakarka and Zina, three beautiful bottlenose dolphins. Yeah. This has got to be one of the most amazing experiences. I've ever had in my entire life. You know, they say that dolphins are supposed to be a cure for depression. And I tell you what, if doing that doesn't make you happy, then nothing ever will. It seemed fitting to end my trip sharing a meal with the warm and generous people of this region. They'd invited me into their world and shared their traditions and their food with me. So this shoulder bone is given to the guest to show them respect. And then the guest should give a little piece of meat back to each of his hosts. Mm. A very delicious Caucasian tradition.